In this video, we'll talk about ectopic beats, but the first question is, what are ectopic beats? Now, if we imagine the heart to have four chambers with two filling chambers on the top, which are called the atria, and two pumping chambers down below, which are called the ventricles. Now, the ventricles have thick wall muscles, but really, the origin of the impulse or your heartbeat starts from a pacemaker cell that sits in this chamber called the right atrium. The other chambers of the heart being the left atrium, the right ventricle, and the left ventricle. Now, if we expand on this heart, we can see that the natural pacemaker here in the heart, which is called the sinoatrial node, starts an impulse that travels in a circumferential manner, so radiating out in a circle, and the electrical impulse then comes into the left atrium, but it also hits a region here, which is called the AV node. And this AV node serves as a relay station that transmits the impulse down to the ventricles, so that the originating impulse from the ventricles starts at the apex and radiates outwards, and so the heart can squeeze from the apex to the midline of the heart down to the center of the heart to force blood to contract out in this direction. So, how do ectopic beats fit in here? Now, we understood from earlier that the top two chambers of the heart are the atria, and the bottom two chambers of the heart are the ventricles. Now, an ectopic beat is simply a heartbeat that originates not from the natural pacemaker that you can see here, but from an alternate site, for example here in this chamber called the left atrium, or indeed from an alternate site in the right atrium, for example this low site. And when this ectopic beat fires in a way that interrupts the natural heartbeat originating from the natural pacemaker, then this is called an atrial ectopic beat. And this is also known as a skinny complex. And I'll come on to explain that later on. Now, there are other forms of ectopic beats which can originate from the ventricles. For example, from here, which is in the midline of the heart, from here, which is close to the inferior wall of the heart on the right ventricular surface, or indeed from the left ventricle. And these are called ventricular ectopic beats. Any one of these can be termed ventricular ectopic beats. So what does an atrial ectopic beat look like on a 12 lead ECG? Here you can see with the normal cardiac contraction here, if you have an impulse originating from the natural pacemaker, you have a wave of activation coming to the AV node here, which we talked about previously. Now, when we have an atrial ectopic that can come from here in a chamber called the left atrium, or indeed uh, from here, for example, in a chamber called the right atrium, typically what we see is a series of skinny heartbeats on the ECG. So what this strip is trying to show is a recording of a two-lead ECG. And what this shows is typically components in the ECG, which indicate the polarization of different sections of the heart. So here, this is called a P wave, and this typically signifies the onset of the activity from the sinoatrial node. This P to QRS interval, or the PR interval, because this is known as the QRS complex, is the time it takes for the impulse to get from the origin of the pacemaker site to the AV node. And the QRS signal is the time it takes to uh, travel, the electricity to travel around and activate the whole ventricle. So it's a very swift conduction with a rapid conduction. And this is the T wave where the heart starts to be ready for the next series of depolarizations. You can see that the interval here is pretty stable across this first three beats with the P, Q, R, S, T wave, P, Q, R, S, T wave, P, Q, 
QRS T wave. And then something odd happens here. Without much of a P wave, you can see the activation occurs very rapidly or with a very close coupling interval here, which is much shorter uh, for this two intervals. This is interval one, interval two, and interval three. And these three intervals signify the occurrence of three atrial ectopic beats. Now, we know that it's not coming from the natural pacemaker here, because that would normally come at a fixed interval. Let's call this interval uh, here. We can actually time the interval, and every one of these small squares is 200 milliseconds. So this is about 1.2 seconds, 1.2 seconds, 1.2 seconds. And that's the rate of firing of this natural pacemaker before we have three quick successive firing from somewhere else in the atria. So for example, here or here or here, we can't really tell. But what you can see here is a very distinct P wave, which looks slightly more peaky than this P waves. And these are the uh, P waves <coughs> that are uh, coming from an atrial ectopic beat. After this last complex, the atrial ectopic beat stops and the next beat you see has a similar interval of 1.2 seconds with the PQRST and similarly PQRST. So this is a situation where we have atrial ectopic beats and the characteristic finding on the EKG is that you have skinny beats here, skinny beats here. Now in contrast, what does a ventricular ectopic beat look like? We already figured out that there are P, Q, R, S, and T waves here in the um, initial uh, section of this trace. What you can see here are both atrial and ventricular ectopic. So we already figured out that this is an atrial ectopic beat. And this atrial ectopic beat looks like an atrial ectopic because this Q, R, S complex is skinny. I referred earlier on to skinny and fat beats. But look at this one. This looks very different. And this is a fat beat. And this is called a wide QRS complex. And generally what we do. So why is this beat fat? Well, we can see that if we have a ventricular ectopic beat, let's say originating from the left ventricular chamber here, what you can see is that instead of activity coming down the naturally swift activation profile down the very specialized conducting tissue, which rapidly causes the both sides of the ventricle to depolarize at the same time or to activate at the same time. What we have here with a ventricular ectopic beat is that this is a rather slow acting and actually causes the ventricles to activate from one chamber first, on this particular example, the left ventricle, before slowly making its way down to the right ventricle here. And this slowing of activation within the ventricles causes a broadening of the QRS complex seen here, therefore causing this kind of fat beat. And this fat beat is called a wide QRS complex beat. And typically this signifies a ventricular ectopic beat. And this is one of the, the things that your physiologist will be looking at when analyzing your ECG or Holter monitor to uh, be able to determine whether you have ectopic beats from the atria. So here, this is an atrial ectopic beat or from the ventricle. And uh, they will be able to, on a 24 hour Holter, quantify the exact burden of atrial or ventricular beats.